Hello and welcome back to Blackwatch Intel. My name is Karashi and today we're going to be talking about competitive play, more specifically an update to competitive play. Jeff Kaplan actually wrote up a long post on the forums discussing varying issues within the game and kind of the things that they're paying attention to. And this one excerpt from that post is specifically focusing on competitive play. And he says, another topic that we've been focused on a lot lately is competitive play. We don't have immediate changes to discuss right now, but we're closely studying issues and perceived problems with the system with an eye towards improvement. Along with that, we talk a lot about matchmaking within the competitive system. We have some plans that should improve some issues that players are seeing, especially at the high end of skill rating spectrum. We have a long and short term plans for competitive that should hopefully improve the experience over time. We're hoping that we can get more of these changes in a, at a faster pace rather than waiting for major milestones. Some of the matchmaking work we want to do is strictly done on our servers, which means that we don't have to wait for a big patch to go out. Again, I know you want more specific details, but development is a process and we're actively discussing and iterating on ideas and systems right now. Now, ultimately, the theme of this video is going to be to discuss the fact that the rank system currently that we have on live has to change. Now, whenever I come up with these ideas, I have a notepad on my phone, I kid you not. And when I'm sitting around, if I'm at work or if I'm laying in bed or if I'm playing games and I have an idea, I open up my notepad and I write the idea down. And the name of this video on my notepad is the ranked system has to change. That is the theme. That's what I'm talking about here. Now, Jeff didn't give us any specifics, but if I had to guess, there are about two major things that they're really going to hone in on with changes to the competitive system. Number one, it's going to be how matches are made from a matchmaking perspective. And I mean that on two points. So it's really kind of like three main things, but I'm going to compound the first two things. One, the average SR. Average SR is working in a really weird kind of way right now. And the reason I say that is because it takes 12 people or six people, six per team, six per team, and it tries to get the overall average of all of those people, whether it be six on one side, six on the other, as close to each other as possible. And that's good in a way, but it doesn't account for what those players play and it doesn't account for high averages and low averages. So what that means is you could actually have a very high top 500 player and a kind of lower GM player all in the same game, and we're talking about, you know, potentially 700 points, 800 points of SR difference. And while the, you know, the lower player is not necessarily bad, they are not quite at that same skill level. So just because the high top 500 player, you know, the super high GM top 500 player is in that game to bring those averages together, doesn't really mean that those games are balanced. And you see this at all tiers of play. Sometimes you'll be in a diamond game and there are plats. Sometimes you'll be in a diamond game and there are golds. And so you see this, this is something that happens. This is realistically something that goes on in the game. And the second portion of that, that I already kind of brought up is that just because you make an average game, even if that isn't the case, say everybody's all in the same tier, the average is actually average because everybody hits that number, that not that there's a high average and a low average that equal out. Even if you get that number, it doesn't account for what those people play. So sure, you might have an average SR team, but you might not have a balanced team in terms of composition. And this is something that we've talked about on this channel a lot. The game needs preferred roles, it needs role queue, it needs an intuitive system, it needs something to build the teams of players that are going to play together, that are gonna make sense to be on the same team. Now let's talk about this from a kind of a different perspective, and this is very anecdotal, so don't read too much into this, but imagine we were building a professional team, and I took the six top DPS players and I put them all on the same team together. Could they perform literally? Yes, absolutely. But is that optimal? Is it a balanced game if they were against an actual six-man pro team that all have their roles out? Absolutely not. And while I think it, again, is very anecdotal to say that the six pro DPS players would lose, I think that's probably the reality. Whether they're the six best DPS players versus, you know, a very strong team of, you know, 2-2-2 two, 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 all in their role, again, very anecdotal, very hypothetical, I still think they come out with a massive disadvantage. And this is stuff you've seen come from pro players like Jake when they talk about the system. He was on an interview on your Overwatch where he talked about the fact that, yeah, the averages are good, that it makes an average, but it doesn't actually make a good game. And it gives very, you know, subtle inconsistencies 
whether or not a team is actually balanced based on the high and the low averages, whether a team is actually balanced based on who the characters are. So that's the first compounded thing that I think they're really going to try to hit on, especially with that comment that he said about changing things on the high end of the skill rating spectrum. Now, the second thing I think they're going to come out with something for is one tricking. And I don't know if I mean to say that they're going to directly come out and say, you know what, we're going to ban one tricking. Or if they're going to come out and say, you know what, one tricking is fine. And this is how we're going to promote flexibility. I don't know what they're going to do, but I think whether it's a rank system change to give more SR to flexing players, or if it's a way to tone down the performance based SR system, or if it's a way to get rid of one tricking outright, I don't know. But I do think that's going to be a big portion of what they're hitting on. Because a lot of the top 500 players, a lot of the high GMs, pro players, they are all kind of fed up with one tricking. They don't care for it. It's not really what the game is about. And although you may be, let's say someone like Shatter 2K, who is a phenomenal Genji and can actually get away with one tricking a lot because he's very applicable with his hero in 90% of situations, he's not a literal one trick rather than, you know, someone who's a Bastion one trick or a Torbjord one trick or a Symmetra one trick or a Mercy one trick who got up and has, you know, an odd percentage of wins because that's also it's an issue in itself because of the way that SR is calculated, you know, because she's on one hero doing one thing and the SR values are just wonky. And that's a discussion for another time or a discussion that you can find in a different capacity on a different channel or previous in our history. So ultimately, my thoughts are this. The rank system has to change. And I think the developers obviously know that. They're obviously testing in-game systems and bouncing ideas off each other. And ultimately, the same thing that I've been saying about Overwatch for months now is coming to fruition. This game is growing. It's evolving. A game like this, specifically like this, very specifically like this, has never really existed. You have a team shooter, but you have a team shooter and you can change your heroes mid-roll. And there, you know, are MOBA elements and it's, you know, fast paced and jumpy and the spectator system isn't good until they reworked it. They have to evolve this game. They have to change it and make steps along the way. But along the way, they're not just changing it and making it better. They're also learning about the game. They're understanding themselves as the owners of the IP, as the developers, what this game is really about. So I have to always hit end on this kind of a note whenever I'm doing these types of discussions. I have full faith in Blizzard. I have faith that whenever there is an issue, I know they're going to take steps to correct it. And we see things like the Mercy rework come out and then the Mercy nerf and now an impending new Mercy nerf. So we understand that they're not perfect and they don't always have the answers either because they don't know. They have to let things play out. They have to find out what we know and we have to give it back to them and they have to give us more information and we work as a team. So whenever I make videos that are complaining, it's just to give my input. And trust me, Blizzard never sees my videos and they probably don't even watch a lot of the big YouTubers out there. They're working on the data. They're working with the pro players. They're paying attention to quick play and what the forum readers are, you know, are posting. And they're just paying attention to all of the information. So I have full faith in Blizzard. I think that they're going to keep continuing to give us a great game. I'm just as passionate about this game as I was from day one. I have my complaints but I'm going to stay optimistic as much as I can. And that's not very much, but I'm happy about the future. I think Overwatch League is going to be amazing and I'm excited to see what these ranked and competitive system changes are. So thanks for checking out this video. Please not leave it up leaving a like and subscribe for future content. I appreciate it again and I'll see you for the next video. Sparks that I'm setting free Does the beat take you over? Just come